Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we've got a This Is Not A Top 10 and it's on the note of T. And T is a note I found myself talking about a lot lately. Uh, it is a note that has come up in many perfumes and I did a video already on the note of T. Uh, it's under my This Is Not A Top 10 playlist. You can find it. And I listed some of the fragrances in my collection that have the note of T. Today, I'm going to rank them, and I'm going to do a top 21 countdown of my favorite tea-based fragrances, or fragrances with the note of tea from my collection. Uh, we're also going to talk about some samples, as is kind of true to the way I've been doing these videos lately. I do want to mention the samples in the video, but they're not going to be part of the ranked uh, episode. It's going to be full bottles only today. And actually, and there is one discovery atomizer, but... Um, you know, the seven and a half or 10 mil discovery atomizers, not the small one or two mil samples. Uh, so T is a note that uh, most people associate in with perfume, with relaxation, with um, kicking back. You know, it's a great stay at home scent when you're kind of by yourself or you're just kind of staying at home and you want to, um, you know, have that comfort mentality. Tea is a very relaxing note to me. There is a lot of different types of tea though. Many people don't realize uh, just how many different types of tea there are uh, in perfume. So you will see the usual black tea, uh, you will see green tea, um, you will see jasmine tea, you'll see just all kinds of different types of tea in, in these fragrances uh, that we're going to talk about today. And many people don't realize just how many different uh, types of tea can be used in perfume. They just think it's tea, right? I mean, tea is tea. It's not true. There's many different types of tea. There's mate, which we're going to talk about. I'm putting that in the tea category. Uh, there is uh, masala chai tea. So there's all kinds of different types of teas that we are going to discuss today. And um, so, so let's get started real quick. I just want to grab my scent of the day because it's something that I would I want to talk about because it's a very special fragrance and um, it's a fragrance that I'm getting to wear for um, the first time as my scent of the day and again I have to give a special shout out to um, my uh, my brother Eddie who ended up um, supplying me with this and uh, he's been so very kind like I've, I've joked before that he is of senator rank in the uh, channel ram hierarchy and so shout out to Eddie for this again First time I've been wearing it today, and I have to tell you, it is instantly one of my favorite musk-based fragrances I've ever smelled, and it's called Inverno Russo. Inverno Russo is all the way back from 2017. It is discontinued, and it's very hard to find, apparently, but I've been wearing this as my scent of the day. Oh, let me tell you something. So, I have a... a it, it's times like this where I really feel blessed to have a direct line to Russian Adam because I wrote him and I said, mate, what in the world is the story with this? And speaking of just kind of staying home and, you know, um, having a relaxing type of scent, he said the whole idea with Inverno Russo when he made it is that it was supposed to be the idea of you are sitting in your home, you have the comforts of your home, the fireplace is on, but outside it's extremely cold. Imagine the Russian winter. Imagine there's snow on the ground, uh, many feet of snow even. You can't leave the house. You're, you're in your home, but you have everything you need, uh, all of the food, all of the water, all of the alcohol you could need to just kind of kick back and enjoy yourself. And uh, it's cold outside, but you're comfy and cozy inside. And this has this white feeling about it, like there's white rose auto, white pepper, and that gives kind of the outside being white. But the thing he told me that really uh, made me go, ah, okay, I understand why I love this scent now. Two things, really. But number one is the musk itself. Yes, it is real. Um, um, there is a real deer musk component. But uh, it's not all deer musk pod. What he ended up using was the outside, the skin of the, of the deer pod, not the actual pod itself, not the insides, which um, the insides apparently make it more kind of fluffy and powdery. The outside, if you actually use the skin of the pod, he was explaining to me that it makes it much more leathery and animalic. Two notes that you know I love in a fragrance. 
And so that's exactly what this does. And this is why I didn't, I didn't know that until he just told me. Um, but he said that, um, there were some very rare, uh, ingredients. For example, he found a peach blossom absolute for this. He said he's never seen it since. Uh, and he had to, of course, tincture it himself, but he said he's never found a peach blossom absolute, uh, you know, that he could use again. He would have to kind of do all this. So it's very unlikely that there will be an Inverno Russo part two. My God, man, this is up there. For me, this is up there with um, Siberian Musk, the one that I keep talking about. It's my favorite musk fragrance. And uh, the other thing about this is there is this uh, Chinese oud, a very similar wild Chinese oud that's actually used in the fragrance Chinese oud. Um, so this is the one that kind of gets all the hype. But there's also a beautiful, rare Chinese oud in Inverno Russo as well, wild Chinese oud. It's just a brilliant fragrance. I love, I, I'm still enjoying it. The dry down is uh, serene. It lasts forever. I mean, I've just been enjoying the hell out of wearing this today. So Inverno Russo by uh, Riz Ladore, my scent of the day. Uh, instantly a contender for my favorite musk fragrance. You'll probably see this and Siberian Musk 1 and 2 on my favorite Musk fragrances. When I rank that, I still have not ranked that video. Okay, so let's talk about uh, some of the samples that I, I think deserve to be given a shout out. So the first one, uh, we're gonna talk about the House of Zoologist. Now, Zoologist as a house is a house I've been exploring lately. If you've been following my channel, I've been uploading videos and I've been doing live streams. And on those live streams, we've been doing uh, first sniffs or early impressions the first time I've smelled these and I've been able to kind of knock out four at a time I'll put one on my wrist one in this wrist one here one here We'll just kind of uh, go through it for the very first time on the live stream It's a great way to interact with everyone and also experience new fragrances all at the same time And so a couple of them that I've discovered very recently. These are all brand new discoveries for me within the last week um, So the first one is going to be panda and Panda's from 2017, uh, and I thought Panda was okay. It's kind of this green, fruity fragrance, if you will. Um, in the dry down, I smelled a lot. I remember Panda's giving a lot of this um, Isoe Super Vibe. I don't know why, but Panda gave me this, um, uh, you know, almost like synthetic molecule Isoe Super feeling, but in the dry down... There were some very unique notes in here, uh, like for example, there's a bamboo note, which you don't see very often. There's earthy notes. Uh, there's iris, which I love. And Panda was um, was very nice. I just don't think it, it moved me enough for a full bottle, but there is a tea note in the top. So it was apple, magnolia, mandarin, orange, lily, osmanthus, ozone notes, and tea. And it was interesting. I enjoyed getting to know it. Go check out my live stream. Um, to, to see what I really thought while it was fresh on my skin of Panda from 2017. From 2020, there was a fragrance that Zoologist put out called, oops, let's, let's not drop it, Ramsey, called Koala. And so Koala um, is the one that probably I like the least from this trio, Panda was probably in the middle, and my favorite is coming up next. Koala is a 2020 release. Um, it was eucalyptus with honey, menthol, mimosa, and there was black tea in the in the heart with geranium, frankincense, spices, vetiver, musk, amber, oak moss, vanilla, and sandalwood. It was a green, fresh scent, if memory serves. I liked it. I just... Um, it wasn't my favorite, let's put it that way. I really didn't like the way that the eucalyptus note was used. I think if I uh, was going to do a, you know, wear a eucalyptus fragrance, I would just wear, you know, something like Body Koros or Creed's Royal Mayfair or something like that. Now, the winner, as far as, far as the zoologist fragrances with the tea note goes, and the one that uh, is probably full bottle worthy, although I don't think I will get a full bottle, but I really enjoyed this one. Uh, and this is from 2017, uh, and it's called Elephant. So Elephant was one of the biggest surprises, I would say, from, you know, testing the zoologist line. And I still have a couple more to go. Um, I actually have a full bottle of moth, so I don't need to, to do that. But there's still a couple that I haven't tried yet. So, for example, there's squid. 
there's seahorse, and there is a uh, rhinoceros comparison video that we have to do between the original rhinoceros and the um, vintage version. So there's still another uh, live stream, zoologist live stream, that uh, is going to be coming up very soon to finish off the sample set, and then we'll move on to another house. Um, but Elephant is the one that probably has been one of the biggest surprises. I really, really enjoyed Elephant, especially into the dry down, which is not something I say very often on a modern niche perfume. It took, it smelled like they really took the time on the dry down. They didn't just throw it together and try to, you know, trick you on the opening. It was a fantastic dry down, very green, woody. It was a uh, Darjeeling tea, which is also a very unique note. It's the only tea note that's specifically Darjeeling tea, which I was saying on the live stream is not my favorite type of tea. Uh, but the brilliance of Elephant to me is how they blended three notes in the base with woody musky notes in, or three notes in the mid with woody mu musky notes in the base. And those three notes are cacao, coconut milk, or this milkiness, I guess you could call it. Um, yeah, it does say coconut milk. So coconut milk and incense or frankincense. The blending of those three, when it gets to the uh, heart of elephant, what a beautiful creation this is, guys. Uh, and I completely see why this was a arts and award olfaction uh, finalist for 27, 2018, the year after, 2018. Um, beautiful creation by Chris Bartlett. And uh, this this was the the surprise, the shock, I would say, of the of discovering the zoologist line. Okay, next on the list is an Ensar Oud, another house that I'm really enjoying getting to know. And this is probably my favorite Kinam fragrance of any that I've tried so far. If you guys know my taste, you know I like ouds that are animalic and challenging. Oh, it's so good. So I like ouds that are animalic and challenging. Kinam generally is not. It's kind of the opposite. It's a little bit, um, you know, I don't know, buttery, fresh, creamy, milk. I, I, it's, it's not my thing. I don't like how it feels very soft, gentle, you know. I like my ouds to be strong, challenging, animalic, the exact opposite of what Kinam does. However, uh, and I've noticed after looking through a lot of the tea accords that Ensar oud really likes tea. He likes to use tea in his compositions. And this one's actually called Jungle Kinam. This is my favorite Kinam fragrance that I have had a chance to smell so far. And one, um, one, uh, you know, asterisk that I need to put, and I put this on the video, you can go check out, there's a video already up on my channel about Jungle Kinam. But, um, Whenever you see a name like this, even in a very expensive house like Kinam, all of the fragrances that use the word Kinam, none of them actually use Kinam Oud in there. That's how expensive Kinam is. There's an entire story behind it. Go watch my video for more detail on the story behind Kinam. But basically, it's the perfumers using different types of Oud to give you the accord or the profile of what Kinam would smell like to them. And so this is my favorite uh, of that version, if you will. It's lavender leaf, sage. I love sage. Very masculine type note, sage. Uh, broom, tea, papau oud, and Thai oud. So there are specific types of oud that were used here. Um, let me see if I can pull it up real quick. Jungle, kinam, and sar oud. So the specific types of oud that were used was um, Tigerwood 1990, which he calls very earthy, and uh, a cacao resinous-like glaze of Sumatora Zen. Those are the two ouds that are listed. And again, I'm not an oud head, so I don't know that stuff. It, you could say, uh, whamma lamma bamma ding dong, and I wouldn't know. Um, but the names sound cool, and the fragrance is very nice. I really enjoyed this one, even though uh, it didn't go into that animalic, facet that I so love. That was a really good take on Kinam Oud. Okay, next uh, we have a Bortnikov. Now, this is uh, Ensar's competition, if you will. 
And this is one of my most hated discoveries of 2022. Again, there's a live stream up on my channel. You go to my live streams, you'll find the Bortnikoff uh, sniffing live stream session. And we smelled three new Bortnikoffs that day, if memory serves. Uh, and they were all colognes. So we put out like a line of colognes last year, and I thought they were absolutely horrendous. The worst work Bortnikoff has ever done, and I love Bortnikoff. And many of my favorites are stuff like Lao Oud, Mysterious Oud, uh, Oud Maximus, you know, Oud Monarch, uh, Musk Habib, Amber, uh, what was it? Uh, um, can't think of it all of a sudden. But um, there's a couple Bortnikoffs that I absolutely adore. Oh, Amber Cologne is what I was thinking of. If you're going to go the Cologne route, definitely go Amber Cologne. Don't go with these three. But one of the three that has a T note is called Cologne de Fa. Cologne de Fa. And Cologne de Fa is supposed to be this fruity, citrusy thing. And the problem with all of them, to me, is that they all had this um, chemical smell, this toilet cleaner, chemical, you know, Clorox. The citruses were very badly done in the opening. And maybe they're expensive citruses. I don't know. It says bitter orange, blood orange, which I know is an expensive, more expensive citrus. There's, let's say, a Kubiba, which is supposed to be this um, shrub that grows in, grows in China and Asia. And um, it's supposed to extend the citrus notes into the dry down. So it's supposed to extend the tangerine, the lemon. There's Petit Gras, which is like the sticks and twigs of the orange blossom. Um, raspberry, there's tea, jasmine, peach sorbet. And, th and that was what part of the problems that I had with this one is um, that peach sorbet note was very, very um, strange. It, it, felt, it felt very sweet and I just, it, it wasn't for me. Uh, and then there's a fragrance that I am going to do a video on sooner or later, once I find time. There's so many fragrances to do videos on. Uh, and this is from the House of Costume National, which I really like this house. I have one full bottle from them, Soul, and I would really like a bottle of Ohm. Uh, I think that's a great fragrance, but this one is called Scent Intense. Not the scent, just Scent Intense. And it came out, if you can believe it, 21 years ago in 2002. It's unbelievable. Uh, but this is this woody, spicy thing. They do woody spices very well. It's bergamot, cardamom, uh, green tea. So green tea is the tea with jasmine, sambac, rose, hibiscus, ambergris, vanilla, leather, sandalwood, and patchouli. So I'm excited to do a video on that one day. And then, again, thanks to, um, I believe this was thanks to Eddie. He ended up sending this to me. I think it was Eddie. If it wasn't, I apologize. But uh, this is from the house of Nishane, a house that I actually really like. And this one's called Wulong Cha. So again, another sample we'll get to talk about on the channel sooner or later, I hope. And this is a fresh citrusy take on um, a Wulong Cha tea, basically. But this is uh, Oolong tea with nutmeg, musk, fig, and then the top is bergamot, orange, tangerine, and that, let's say, a Kubiba note we talked about earlier with uh, Bortnikoff. And then, this is a little uh, decant, thanks to my good friend Anuj at Enchante Perfumes for creating this for me. Um, this is a, um, a very hard to find, way overpriced, way overhyped uh, vintage fragrance. I don't think it's worth the hype at all. I think it's just because it's discontinued. It was uh, last marketed by Lancaster, and this is called Good Life for Men by Davidoff. And... Um, it's a Pierre Bourdon creation, so you know it's a good fragrance. Pierre Bourdon does not make bad fragrances. He's one of the best perfumers to ever live, but he had a style in the late 90s that was very fresh. You know, if you know what he was doing back then, like live jazz and stuff like that, you're, you're going to get a little bit of that here. It's bergamot, fig leaf, grapefruit, lavender, melon. He loved that melon note back then. Blackcurrant, magnolia, uh, pelargonium, violet, lemon, amber, clover, almond, sandalwood, and tea. And it's a good fragrance, don't get me wrong, but it's just kind of a fresh, you know, when it gets hot, this will be a good one to just talk about. Um, yeah, this will be a good one to talk about when it gets hot here in Texas this summer. And then, you know, if I was uh, gonna put one of these on the list, 
this would definitely be a contender to go on the list. This has both black tea and white tea and green tea, okay? And it's from the house of, uh, literally the house of matriarch. And this is called Bittersweet Symphony. It came out in 2015, and I really like this fragrance. I like the House of Matriarch. I can't wait to talk more about them. I have not talked about them at all on the channel. I don't think I've done a single video on them. Uh, and so this is smoky, spicy tea with oud and wood and all kind of very interesting notes. Uh, so for example, there is a dragon's blood note, which is the name of a uh, red resin, which can be obtained from plants of different species. And uh, I think they're mostly from um, different types of trees. And um, uh, like I said, black tea, white tea, green tea, cacao, cystus, saffron, spikenard, Bulgarian geranium, charred oak, oud, hyracium. So it's animalic. I love animalics. Ambergris. And she claims to use real ambergris. And the top is uh, henna, gentian, Dong Kwai and Vervain. Beautifully complex and unique fragrance. I really like uh, what she did, what Christy Michelle did with uh, Bittersweet Symphony. And then we've got a Pine Ward, and this is probably like one of the new niche houses. I'm going to even call them an indie house. They're kind of an indie house to me because they remind me more of the style of like Slumber House. Even though I've never smelled a Slumber House, it reminds me of that style. Uh, the way that the fragrances are explained and um, marketed and all that stuff. You know, uh, you could put them in in league with Russian Adam, Bortnikov, even though he doesn't do very much tea. It's a very unique house, and it's, it's called Pine Ward is the house. And this particular fragrance is called Pastoral. So Pastoral came out last year. And I did one video on this house, and someone left me a comment on that video just a day or two ago, and they were like, dude, this was four months ago. How come you're not talking about this house again? I'm like, just time, just time constraints, you know? They're a house that deserves to be talked about. And uh, this is apricot, blackberry jam, honey, propolis, beeswax, sweet grass, hay, wheat, oat, bourbon vetiver, mate tea, and oak moss. So it's kind of sweet and fruity, but I like the undertones of green, spicy, resinous, you know, it's good stuff. I'm a fan. Uh, and then, speaking of recent live videos done, if you go back to my live streams within the last week or two, thanks to Allie for sending me some women's versions of Amouage I have never smelled before. This one is one of the most unique tea fragrances you will smell. It's, um, it's beautiful. It's probably full bottle worthy, uh, although it's a little bit more traditionally feminine than what I like to wear. It's a beautiful fragrance and it's called Journey Woman. So go check out my live stream if you want to get more of my thoughts right when I sprayed this stuff. But it's um, apricot with jasmine tea and osmanthus, nutmeg and cardamom. Stunning opening. Beautiful. With jasmine sambac, mimosa, honey. I love honey. Cedarwood, pipe tobacco. Saffron, vanilla, cypriol, and musk. Beautiful. I love Journey Man as well. One of my favorite cypriol fragrances uh, of all time. And then we've got an Imaginary Authors. Another house that I have an entire sample set that I was... Well, what did I do with it? Here they are. An entire sample set to basically go through with you guys at, at some point soon. And this is called O Unknown. So O Unknown is um, this woody, powdery, tea-based fragrance. Probably another one that if I if I was putting these in the list, this would be relatively high because it's focusing on two teas, black tea and Lapsang Suchong tea with orris butter. The orris butter in here is beautiful. Kyoto moss, musk, and sandalwood. So another one that I will hopefully be able to talk about soon on the channel. We'll do some live streams where Imaginary Authors is the... Um, star of, the, of those live streams. And then we've got, um, that was the final uh, sample. So now we're moving on to the full bottles and the list, the countdown. So we're going to start with number, we are going to start with number 21 on the list. So again, this is a top 21 
because that's how many full bottles I had with tea listed. I might have missed one or two, but it's hard to keep up with all of them. So number 21 is a discontinued hyped fragrance, probably overhyped, probably very similar to the way that Davidoff's Good Life is overhyped, okay? It's in that range. I would put the two probably neck and neck as far as I like them both. This is a fresh green scent that was made by Louise Turner, and it's from the House of Trusardi, and it's called Python Womo. Let me get my, um, let me get my, my uh, microfiber cloth. Huh? All right, so this is Python for Men, or Python Womo. I think it's Python for Men. Yeah, Python for Men. Uh, and so this is one, my bottle's from Scannon, but I think there's almost no difference with the Selective Beauty. Get whatever you can get if you're interested in this. Although I will tell you, it's kind of just a easy to wear, fresh, you know, it's got tree. The, now the notes are unique for a freshie. I will give Louise Turner that. It's tree bark, mulch, tea, olive, cypress leaf, bourbon vetiver, musk, teak wood, and tonka. But it kind of comes across as just smelling like a easy to wear, slightly green, fresh. You know, the olive note is unique, but nothing special. Don't pay hundreds for this. I don't think it's worth it. I don't think that it's worth the prices that it's going for. Um, but I will do a, I'll do a full review on, on this one day very soon. So this is Python for Men by Trusardi at number 21. Number 20 is a acquisition I got, I think in the last three months or so. So it's relatively new. I've uh, worn it to bed a couple times, but I haven't given it a full wear yet, but I, I enjoy it. It's from the house of Richard James and it's called Seville Row. Whoops, I'll show you the side with the writing. Seville Row. So Seville Row is a uh, fragrance from the house of Richard James. And Richard James, apparently they were a very famous tailor uh, at the turn of the century. And uh, so this fragrance is, I think, a fragrance that um, is a very unique fragrance. There's some notes in here that you usually won't find in masculine fragrances, because this was a fragrance for men, of course. Um, and it's basil, bergamot, green tea, ginger, mandarin orange, petit gras, rosemary, cardamom, coriander, lavender, lily of the valley, rose, tuberose. Tuberose is a big one on this one. Amber, oak moss, musk, patchouli, sandalwood, tobacco, vetiver, and suede. And, you know, it's the... It's probably that tuberose that uh, would put most guys off nowadays, uh, but I don't think it leans feminine. I think it's completely unisex. I think it's, um, you know, I think the lavender gives it that masculine edge. The tuberose and lily of the valley give it that traditional feminine edge, but then the tobacco and the suede bring it back. And, and there's rosemary, which is a traditionally masculine note, bring it back to the masculine side. So it's right there in the middle for me. Uh, but if you like interesting fragrances, it's the exact opposite of Trusardi Python Womo. This is kind of boring and easy to wear. This has much more layers. It's um, more moving parts, if you will. It's good stuff. Uh, okay, next on the list, we've got number 19. And this is a Salvatore Ferragamo. And it's actually a very hard Salvatore Ferragamo to find, believe it or not. Um, and... I think they might have renamed it, or maybe this is discontinued. I have no clue, but they're, it's hard to find these for me. It took me a long time to find this one. Uh, and this is called Testa di Moro by Salvatore Ferragamo. So, Testa di Moro. And um, this is actually a very interesting take on a modern, like, suede-like leather, if you will. Um... There's frankincense, there's pink pepper, there's dried fruits, there's leather, saffron, patchouli, with styrax, sandalwood, and that mate tea note. And I think it's now known, or maybe it used to be known as incense suede, and I have no clue what's going on with this, but it says it's still available. I don't I don't think I've seen it on the website. First off, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with it. Hard to find in the United States, let's say that. Um, and so Testa di Moro... Uh, I like it. It's it's an easy to wear 
leather scent for me. Uh, there is a fragrance from the house of Orto Parisi that's on my to-buy list called Sturkis. Sturkis also came out in 2014, just like Testa di Moro, but it has more of that animalic challenging oud and the leather is rougher. Uh, and so I think I want a bottle of um, Sturkis and I think I would maybe even consider selling this bottle because it's so hard to find. Prices are expensive. Um, but if you like the easier to wear leathery, suede fragrances, you know, you can kind of get an idea from the leather outline around the bottle. Um, this is not bad. It's, it's not what it's hyped up to be, but it's not bad. Okay, next on the list, we've got a fragrance that I have yet to really talk about on the channel, but I think it's a really good creation. This was a bottle that was very kindly gifted to me by Rachel, I believe. Thank you, Rachel. And this one is called Winter Nights. Now, Winter Nights is a fragrance by this house right here. I believe, I believe it's pronounced Dason, Dason Fragrances. And Winter Nights is created by Josh Meyer, who owns the brand of Imaginary Authors. So uh, Dason is a collaboration with the brand owner. And also, I think she's a perfume maker as well. Samantha uh, Ryder, Raider is her name. And this is actually really good stuff. If you like deep, dark, smoky fragrances, this is one to check out. If you like smoke, um, check this one out. This is uh, this smoky campfire with tea, cardamom, lavender, and musk. That's basically it. It's woody. It's smoky. You know, it's slightly green because there's this forest-like feel. So it literally feels like you're standing in the forest around a campfire. There's tea cooking off to the side and spices. It's spiced tea. You know, it's that kind of feel. And, and look at the color of the juice. It's a dark fragrance. Beautiful. No one talks about this one. And um, I think they should. It's good. Uh, okay, number 17. And now we're on to our House of Make. House of Matriarch uh, Discovery sample, Discovery Atomizer, if you will. And they come in these neat little pouches. I like I like the House of Matriarch. It's a good house. Expensive, though. I wouldn't pay full price, but it's a good house. This one came out a decade ago. I can't believe it's been a decade already. This is a smoky and woody fragrance from the House of Matriarch, and it's called Devotion. Devotion is one of my favorite incense fragrances that no one talks about. Recently, someone mentioned, um, what are your favorite incenses? And I mentioned a couple. I mentioned Cardinal by Healy. Uh, I mentioned Incense Extreme by Tower, which is really one of my favorites. I love that one. I mentioned Blood on Sons by Armani. Um, and I, you should also throw Devotion in that list. Devotion is such a great fragrance. It's, um, it's got, of course, the frankincense, the incense-y, smoky vibe, right? But it's mixed with notes like myrrh, which makes it resinous and adds this oriental feel. There's leather. I love leather. There's oud. Well done oud here. And I don't know if she uses real oud or not, but it smells, whatever type of oud she uses, it smells like the next level up over something like, you know, the Tom Ford Oud Woods and stuff like that. It doesn't smell as high quality as the Oud that you'll smell in something like an Arige La Dore creation. It's not that good, but it's, I would put it right between the two, you know. If Arige La Dore is here and Tom Ford is here, House of Matriarchs in the middle, okay? And it's Ambery Ambrette with tea, Apopanax, exotic spices, and Hawaiian vanilla. Beautiful, smoky incense. I love Devotion. And um, probably full bottle worthy, but you know, when you have a big collection, you don't always need full bottles. These 10 mils are perfect. So yes, Devotion comes in at number 17 on the T list. Number 16 is the first of two from the house of uh, Parfum d'Empire. And this is one of my favorite ambers of all time. I discovered this last year and uh, instantly rocketed to the top, uh, not to the top, but close to the top of my amber. I think I did a ranked, this is not a top 10 uh, amber list. And this one's called Ombre Russe. And what makes Ombre Russe 
Um, so good. Well, a couple things. Number one, it starts off with this brilliant contrast between champagne and vodka. And if you think about, you know, um, this idea of Parfum d'Empire being based on historical times in different parts of the world, and you think about Russia, and you think about the whole divide between uh, the bourgeoisie and the working class, right, in communism, and you think about the lavish parties thrown by the people in power in those type of countries um, back in the day, back when, you know, communists really ruled Russia. Champagne was kind of flowing by them, and vodka was poured by the working man, right? The blue-collar man. And um, what ends up happening is what comes to the forefront are three main notes. Ambergris and a beautiful ambergris. I don't know if it's real or not, but it smells so brilliant. With cumin and tea, okay? And that cumin note can put some people off, but it's so brilliantly blended with the animalic ambergris because cumin is somewhat of an animalic note by itself and that tea note. And then you get the leather and the frankincense and the vanilla, and it's just a beautiful amber. It's multifaceted. It changes a lot. It's it's one of my favorites. So yes, Ombre Russe comes in at number 16. Number 15 is a Bulgari. And this is actually a creation from the great... Uh, Anique Minardo. That's how she should be referred to from now on. The great Anique Minardo. She created this in 1998. This is Bulgari Black, the hockey puck. And Bulgari Black is, I think it's still available for purchase. I thought it was discontinued for the longest time, but I don't think it is. It's um, bergamot, green tea, jasmine, sandalwood, cedar, amber, leather, musk, and vanilla. And, um, you know, this shares a similarity with um, Van Cleef and Arpel's Midnight in Paris, which is coming up a couple slots after this. And um, the difference is, though, that this is a little bit more rubbery. It has this, uh, you know, it literally smells like the bottle. Like, this is like this rubber, like a tire. It has this tire rubbery smell, like this burnt tire. I like it. It's a very good designer. Well done designer. Again, completely totally uh, unisex. And finally, for this side of the table, we've got a Clive Christian. And believe it or not, those of you repeat channel, watch, watchers of Channel Ram will know this one. This is in the world famous Ostrich Box, me lord. Hmm, yes, yes indeed. Uh, this is Clive Christian C. For men. And I love this stuff. Maybe I should wear this tomorrow. Oh. Oh, it's so good. If it is... Um, I like the way that Peter from Fragrance View uh, describes C for men. He describes it as Tuscan Leather Intense. And that's kind of what it is. Tuscan Leather by Tom Ford came out in 2007. This came out in 2010. And it is definitely definitely inspired by it's a christian uh, provenzano creation and it is um leaves elemi mandarin orange mate tea so it's mate tea and tea thyme lemon clove raspberry orris root jasmine cardamom rose saffron cinnamon cystus amber tree moss costas Gaiac wood, leather, musk, oud, cyrax, tobacco, tonka bean, vanilla, frankincense, cedar, and cypress. Hell of a note listing, and it just kind of smells like Tuscan leather. Um, do I get any oud in this? Not really. Uh, there's really not much oud in here, but maybe it just helps, you know, with like the backbone of the scent, if you will. Okay, next on the list, we have... Uh, an Oscar de la Renta fragrance, an underrated Oscar de la Renta fragrance, if I must say so myself, comes in at number 13, and this is called Oscar de la Renta Gentleman. Now, this is a cheapie, or it was a cheapie for the longest time. Gentleman is a fantastic fragrance. Um, it's a homage to the late, great Oscar de la Renta, who used to love this, this uh, playing dominoes. And Oscar de la Renta, Gentleman, um, 
is kind of this spicy fragrance. I like the spices in here. Spicy, woody, slightly green, but um, it opens up with champagne. So we've had two champagne fragrances now. Uh, Ambre Russe and Oscar de la Renta Gentleman. The uh, champagne note is instantly blended with uh, cardamom, and the cardamom here reminds me of the cardamom used in um, Amouage Boundless, okay? And it smells a little bit like Boundless in the in the beginning. I don't know why. It doesn't smell like Boundless in the dry down. But when I first spray this, I always get this Boundless, you know, the cardamom, I guess, really reminds me of Boundless. But there is this grapefruit, and the grapefruit makes it feel much more designer than you get in, in Boundless. Uh, there's geranium, rosemary, black tea with amber, Haitian vetiver, woody notes, and labdanum. And those woody notes um, and the uh, grapefruit makes it feel like a designer, but an easy-to-wear designer and a, and a very underlooked designer. And maybe because the bottle is considered to be tacky by some people. I like the bottle. You know, Paco Rabanne recently passed away, and, you know... If they do some sort of tribute to Paco Rabanne, I think it's kind of a cool thing. So this is the tribute to Oscar de la Renta. I like it. Um, so, Gentleman. Gets overlooked a lot. Comes in at number 13. Number 12 is that Van Cleef and Arpels fragrance I was talking about. And I have a problem because my bottle's actually leaking from the bottom. Um, I don't know how or why, but it is literally leaking from the bottom. So... I decanted some today, but I don't have enough stuff to decant the rest, so I'm just going to kind of hope that it doesn't continue to leak. It's kind of frustrating. Um, I picked it up today, and I was like, whoa, it's all sticky on the bottom. So I'm going to save as much of this juice as I can, but, um, and this is the big boy. This is the 125 mil, so I want to save as much of this as I can. Especially since it's discontinued and now goes for like 300 bucks, which is insane. Don't pay that. It's not worth that. This is uh, no more than a $100 fragrance. But it's very, very good and very, very likable. And the thing about um, Van Cleef and Arpels Midnight in Paris is it was done by Olivier Polge and Domitel Michelin Bertier. And Olivier Polge, to me, just before his time at Chanel even... Everything he created, even though it smelled so designer, you know, uh, the one eau de parfum and all and, and all that stuff that he did. I love his style, you know. I love wearing his fragrances. Everything seems like uh, it's it's made by a master, even though he was younger then. There's a little bit of powderiness here, but I really like the focus on the leather and that mate tea with the there's this frankincense note in the dry down with amber and tonka and the amber and tonka you know again makes it feel kind of designery because it has that tonka bean that you smell in a lot of designer fragrances but this is very very well done and i love the bottle i wish van cleef and arpels would bring this back and i wish they would make um midnight in texas and i can be the creative director so, Midnight in Paris comes in at number 12. Number 11 is back to uh, Parfum d'Empire. And this is uh, the one that is probably the most tea prominent to me. Uh, the Assam tea hits you right from the beginning here. And it's called Fougère Bengal. A beautiful take on a Fougère. Lovely uh, lavender with hay, tobacco, tonka bean. Um, patchouli, oak moss, and vanilla. And the thing about Marc Antoine Cortacciatio's perfumes is that he really knows how to blend in these animalic notes. Some of them are very subtle, some of them are noticeable, but I love the way he blends in these animalic notes. All of his fragrances have a little touch of this animalic funk, you know? And um, it's never overdone to me. Never overdone. Uh, it's a beautiful take on a fougere. Very modern, you know. Fougeres are seen by many as old-fashioned, right? Um, like, speaking of Paco Rabanne recently passing away, I um, I wore this as a uh, symbol, you know, of uh, recognition 
of his life when he passed away because this was my old man's signature scent. It's a beautiful bar barbershop fougere. People think of this as old fashioned. Absolutely not. This is this will be this will be in my collection until the day I die. I've got three backups of this. I love Paco Rabanne for them, but I bring it up because people think, oh, this is an old school barbershop. It's old school, you know. It's classic. It's old. This is Mark Antoine Cortacciatio taking that old school DNA, if you will, that old school fougere DNA, and completely modernizing it. Uh, I love fougere Bengal and. Um, Fantastic fragrance. Lovely tea note right from the get-go with that Assam tea. Okay, next on the list, we've got the top 10. And number 10 is going to be Erosia, believe it or not. Um, and it's going to be... It's going to be Roja's Oligarch. So Oligarch is discontinued because of the name. Um, and what they originally did was they discontinued the Eau de Parfum and then they put it out in the Pure Parfum and doubled the price because Roja loves doing that. And uh, which there's no need. This lasts all day, you know, in Eau de Parfum. There's no need for a Pure Parfum that's double the price, in my opinion. Not unless you're just money hungry. But this is where my love-hate relationship with Roja comes into play is because even though I feel like he deserves to be poked a little bit for that money hungry love that he has his fragrances are extremely overpriced uh, although some of them are very good that's the problem that I have and this is one of them this is a very good fragrance this is the reason I never bought um this is the reason I never bought Terre de Hermes for so long now I bought a 500 mil Terre de Hermes bottle since then but uh Oligarch is a stunning, it's basically, I would describe it as a fruity chipra, okay? Citrusy and spicy, um, woody. It has a beautiful lavender, thyme, citrusy opening with lots of fruits. So you get everything. You get coconut and apple and blackcurrant and some people even say strawberry. All kind of fruits in here with uh, orange blossom, jasmine from grass, champaca flower, grass, and then mate tea with galbanum, pink pepper, and aniseed, patchouli, oak moss, cedarwood, juniper, berry, vanilla, tonka bean, amber, iris, birch, leather, ambergris, and musk. Very complex. Goes through multiple transitions. Fantastic in the heat. One of my favorite rosas to wear in the heat. Shame that it's discontinued. Absolute shame. Okay, next on the list we have a Creed at number nine. And even though my bottle isn't in tip-top shape, you can still take a look. This is a vintage bottle of Silver Mountain Water. And uh, Silver Mountain Water is um, a Pierre Bourdon creation, of course, even though the, you know, uh, the databases don't say it's a Pierre Bourdon. It is. And... Um, this is a fresh citrusy scent with uh, bergamot, mandarin orange, neroli, marine notes. It's slightly marine, almost, but it almost feels like, it literally does feel like the snow melting on the top of a mountain. Makes perfect sense. Green tea, and one of the best green tea notes. However, there is a tea note, and of course that Creed creamy sandalwood that you can just wear anywhere. There is a um, tea note that I've found since then, that I've discovered since then that I feel like takes the tea note from Silver Mountain Water and just takes it to the next level for me. And we'll talk about that very soon. It's uh, number um, two on the list, so it's way up there. But uh, I think it borrows the tea note from Silver Mountain Water, or at least the way it's executed. Okay, next on the list, we've got number eight, and it's a Kenzo. And this is a, a fragrance called Kenzo Jungle Poron. Now, I've heard some people say they don't are not impressed by this fragrance, and I'm shocked. I have an older splash, a vintage splash bottle. If you can find, <coughs> excuse me, if you can find the older bottles before um, 
Kenzo was purchased by Louis Vuitton Moet Hennessy. I don't know if it makes a difference or not. All I know is I was shocked people said they don't like this fragrance. This is one of the best spicy fragrances in my collection. It's spicy, it's woody, uh, it's lime, nutmeg, mate tea with cinnamon, benzoin, gaiac wood, and cedar, and it's an Olivier Cresp, one of the best Olivier Cresp creations. I love Kenzo Jungle Pour Homme, and you can wear that um, in any weather, any weather it works. Okay, next on the list, we've got number seven. It's a Diptyque, and this is another very underrated. No one talks about this one. Um, most people would consider it a patchouli, but it's really kind of like a tea patchouli with violet leaf. Very, um, even though at first glance you might just think, okay, it's a patchouli. It's an earthy patchouli from, you know, in the style of like the 1970s hard, harsh patchoulis, which I love. Um... Givenchy Gentleman for Men is one of my favorite from 1974 is one of my favorite scents of all time and it made number one on my top patchouli list. You can go check that out. Uh, speaking of live stream, we did a top 22 patchoulis for to close out 2022. Givenchy Gentleman was numero uno. And um, this kind of borrows from Givenchy Gentleman. It's Diptyque's Tempo. Look at that. Look how beautiful. And if you look closely... You can kind of see some 70s, you know, there's like the psychedelic mushroom up here. There's, you know, elephants. And if you go to the back, there's like a snake coming out of the volcano and just very uh, psychedelic scenes playing out. Tempo is earthy and spicy patchouli, but it does have that bergamot pink pepper that Olivier Peshaw uses so often in his fragrances if you know his style and Olivier Peshaw has made a lot of um diptyque fragrances uh but that kind of you know pink pepper spicy opening you'll you'll smell in other designers um uh, you'll also smell it in uh 34 Boulevard Saint Germain which he also did for diptyque there's a very similar bergamot pink pepper kind of opening thing but then it goes into this patchouli Indonesian patchouli, very well done, with violet leaf, clary sage, which keeps it very masculine to me. This is a masculine patchouli with mate absolute. So not just mate tea, but mate absolute. Usually the absolute is heavier, thicker, richer, denser. And so here you get that absolute. It's beautiful. 2018 release. Very underrated patchoulis. Okay, next on the list, we've got a Bertrand Ducha for it, number six. And this is the only one on the list with this masala chai tea note. And I love this fragrance. Absolutely love it. It's one of my favorite Bertrand du Chaffors. Um, and I'm so blessed to have this vintage bottle. Uh, and it's from the house of La Tizan Parfumea. And this is called Zonka. So Zonka is woody and leathery. It's cardamom, lychee blossom with peony. And... Um, Bertrand Duchefour did this, um, peony, he was on this peony kick, okay, he also used peony in Dia Man by M. Wash. beautiful, uh, you hardly ever see peony notes used in, in masculine perfumery, and perfume in general, it's a very hard note because it's a very soft flower, extremely soft, um, almost like you have to stick your face in it to smell it, it's one of the most beautiful smells you'll ever smell on earth, but it's very, very soft, it doesn't project. And he made two fragrances in about a five-year span that used peony the best I've ever smelled in all of perfume. And he went back to that vetiver, uh, iris, papyrus combo. He's been kind of playing with this in the early 2000s. Um, you get little bits and pieces of, uh, you know, it's almost like a blend of Timbuktu meets Diaman meets his new creation that he made for Zonka. And the new creation was this masala chai note. Very strange, very interesting, and um, very Bertrand du Chaffour. And there's a leathery dry down. Fantastic. No one else but the magician could come up with something like Zonka. Absolute love for me. Okay, so that is number six. Number five. Number five is a creation by the great... Um, Gerard Anthony. This is probably one of his most wearable 
well, I won't say wearable, but designer creations. Uh, it's from the House of Balenciaga. It came out in the year 2000, and this is called Cristobal por Homme. Just a stunning creation. I wore this to bed the other night, and I was shocked, taken aback by the beauty of Cristobal por Homme. Uh, huh. It is woody. It is slightly sweet. That's the thing that might take this back a bit, but this is a sweetness that I can enjoy, and I've said it before. I said it on the live stream yesterday, and some people got offended, but I stand by my comment. Juvenile, sweet sweet fragrances smell juvenile to me. They smell, um, you know, they smell like something you would smell on a younger, like a, like a teenager or a college kid or something like that. Sweet fragrances give off that juvenile vibe to me. Uh, you know, older, distinguished men shouldn't be walking around smelling like sweet Shouldn't be smelling like gumdrops and, um, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, they, sh they shouldn't be smelling like, um, you know, what's that note that you keep seeing? Caramel. Shouldn't be smelling like damn caramel, okay? Um, but sometimes sweet is okay if it's properly done right. I hate the modern sweet fragrances. Uh, like, for example, the way Parfum de Marly does sweet is too much for me. But... The way that Gerard Anthony did the sweetness here, I think is absolutely brilliant. And he mixed it with two relaxing notes. One is coffee and one is tea. And so there's mugwort, which makes it a little bit green with white pepper. There's white pepper in my scent of the day today too. Mm. And uh, geranium, coriander, nutmeg, sandalwood, amber, benzoin, tobacco, and vanilla. Very, very wearable. Beautiful in the cold, but I think it's fresh enough from the pepperiness and the tea and, the, and these fresher notes that you could wear this pretty much all year round. Okay, next on the list, we've got a Guerlain, and this is number four. And number four might shock some people, but uh, this is a big part of this fragrance that I've come to believe. And uh, it's from the year 2005. And this is L'Instant de Guerlain Eau Extreme. Now, now it's called L'Instant de Guerlain Pour Homme EDP. Back then it was called L'Instant de Guerlain Pour Homme Eau Extreme. Uh, and it's Elemi with star anise, citrus notes, jasmine, neroli, patchouli blossom, hibiscus seeds, cacao, patchouli, sandalwood, tea, and cedar. And the tea makes up a bigger part of this fragrance than you'll initially realize. You're going to get the patchouli, you're going to get the elemi and the star anise and the cacao. And once you wear it more, then you'll pick up the hibiscus flowers or hibiscus seeds and the tea. And what a creation by Beatrice Piquet. Um, just a, uh, this and Trussardi Uomo from 1983 for me are two of my absolute favorites. So... Cheers to Beatrice PK. Okay, uh, next on the list we have a Gucci. And this is actually one that you guys probably have been expecting or, or uh, waiting to see, I will say. This is one that probably no one is, is shocked is on this list. Uh, for the longest time, I thought it was my favorite tea-based fragrance, but... It has been dethroned multiple times, actually. It's been dethroned twice, but it's still a fantastic, wearable, fresh, spicy tea-based scent. It was put out in 2007, and one of the most beautiful bottles. I love this Gucci bottle, too. It's heavy. Uh, I wish they would put out bottles like this again. And this is called Gucci Pour Homme 2, or Gucci Pour Homme Dur. Uh, this is spicy, fresh, bergamot, violet leaf, pimento, black tea, cinnamon, myrrh, olive wood, tobacco, and white musk. And what happens? So when you spray this, and actually we ended up with two tea fragrances with blue juice. Uh, this is far superior to me though. And what ends up happening when you first spray is you realize just this ozonic freshness from the violet leaf, but it's not extremely gasoline-like, like whenever you smell Fahrenheit, right? This is more... Oh, it's so good. So this is more like this relaxed take on the ozonic violet leaf. Um, and I, I love that tea note. This is one of the most relaxing tea fragrances in my collection. Um, there's a couple that give me kind of the same vibe. If you've ever smelled 
Mont Blanc Star Walker. They don't smell the same, but they kind of give me the same vibe. They both just put me in this very relaxing state of mood. I didn't include Star Walker. For the longest time, I thought there was tea in there, but there's not. Uh, there's no tea. It's, um, uh, apparently, there's, there's no tea, you know, according to the databases. Uh, but but uh, Gucci Porum 2, there definitely is a tea note. So relaxing, fantastic creation. Discontinued, of course, but, um, you know, if you can find a bottle at a reasonable price, I would say go for it. This is the, uh, what is this? This is the big boy. I think this is the, can't see. Yeah, this is the 100 mil. This is the 100 mil. So, so yes, beautiful creation. And then that leaves only two. Can you guess which one's number one and which one's number two? So, number two is an Amouage. And I know I mentioned Journey Woman earlier, but this is on another level to me. This is actually one of the best Amouages. Um, maybe my favorite women's version of Amouage. I, it's close. Uh, and this is called Epic Woman. So, this is an older bottle when it was just... Um, it wasn't Amouage SAOC, it was just uh, Oman Perfumery LLC, so it was an older bottle. I don't know how old, but I think it's probably like a decade old. It is still the magnetic cap, but I think it's the first era of the magnetic cap where there was nothing written on the front or the sides. It's just, you can see Epic right here, and actually when you take it off, Epic is also on the collar, interestingly enough. So it's both. And Epic Woman... Oh man, what a creation this is. One of the best oriental fragrances, probably the best Cecile Zerokian. Um, this is better than Tango or Ani or any of those other fragrances she created that gets hyped. Epic Woman for me, what a find this was. Like when I found this, I almost slapped myself in the face. Like I literally almost just bitch slapped myself for waiting so long to discover this just because it said epic woman you know and i love epic man i love amouages but discovering the women's line of amouages basically changed my journey my fragrance journey uh this jubilation 25 for women uh i mean fate woman they're just fantastic completely full bottle worthy and um so epic woman is the fragrance that uses the tea accord from Silver Mountain Water to me, but they built it around this cumin. You will get the cumin, but it's that Cecile Zerokian style cumin where she kind of blends it with things that make it easier to digest. So it's blended with pink pepper, cinnamon, and rose. You're going to get the rose almost right away. And it's a beautiful damask rose. It's mixed with geranium, and I think they play a little trick. The geranium kind of extends the rose a bit. Um, you know, geranium can sometimes come across as rosy anyway, but it's beautiful. And that T note is one of the best. This was almost number one. This was damn close to being number one. Uh, and it dries down to this irisy, ambery, uh, incensey, of course it's amouage, with oud. And sandalwood and musk and vanilla and all this other beautiful stuff. It's just the most beautiful journey. And you know, when that T note comes out in the heart, there's just something about it that gives me Silver Mountain Water vibe. The way the tea is done, you know, it's so um, technically sound. It's beautiful. What a fragrance. Epic Woman by Amouage number two. So that leaves one. Can you guys guess what it is? If you know what I've been talking about lately, you know there's no surprises on this one. And it's not even a... It's not even a question, actually. I didn't even think about this not being number one. This is instantly number one. Maybe I'll wear this tomorrow. I have so much I want to wear. Um, but this is a creation by Serge Luton. And number one, without a doubt, hands down, emphatic number one for me. This is 5 o'clock, Ocean Jambra, in reference to the famous... Uh, traditional British tea time of five o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, and I mean, what can I say? So there, there, someone left a comment saying that it's Lapsang Suchong tea. I don't know whatever type of tea. I have no clue. All I know is that it is the perfect tea scent. Perfect. It's spicy. 
It's woody. It's got this cacao, which is also a very, you know, chocolatey, like enveloping, honeyed, like this honey note with candied ginger. So there's candied ginger. It's not just that sharp ginger. It's candied. Um, and it's a, I think it's officially a gourmand. You know, you can call this a, uh, you can call this a gourmand. Uh, and, and I don't think anyone would, would question, question that, uh, because of the tea and the candied ginger and the honey and all that good stuff. But it's my kind of gourmand. And the most brilliant part about, yes, the tea is perfect. Yes, it's relaxing. The most brilliant part about it to me is that Serge Luton patchouli. The patchouli you'll find in Borneo 1834 and all of his other just, you know, fantastic creations that use that patchouli note. Here, it's used to perfection, absolute uh, perfection. I think the patchouli in here is maybe the best patchouli I've smelled, even in a Serge Luton. I have some Serge Lutons that are coming. Uh, thanks to a friend I hope to have on the channel when I actually do the unboxing of the Serge Lutons that are coming, because it's, it's going to be a lot. Uh, and shout out to Anuj at Enchante for helping ship them to me. And so... I can't wait to dive into more of the Serge Lutons I've never smelled before, but this, this is an absolute revelation for me. So, and I can't believe I'm late to the party. Serge Luton, 5 o'clock, Ocean Jambra, number one tea fragrance in my collection. So thanks for watching. We're right around an hour, um, which is not too bad for my videos. Uh, so do leave a comment, and I know I don't say this enough, but do leave a like, and, you know, not many people... Uh, you know, not many people are used to hearing me say that because I usually just don't like, you know, I think it's common sense. If you like the video, leave a like. But sometimes people need to be reminded. I get it. So uh, leave a like. It helps the the old YouTube algorithm that we give so much shit to. But it really does help new, bring new people to the channel. And, um, you know, with the new people, there's going to be some growing pains. There's going to be some growth. But uh, I think for the most part, it'll be exciting to get more new people to, to you know, our little fragrance town. I learned so much from you guys, and there's so much to learn. I mean, it's it's a never-ending wall of information of new fragrances to smell and learn about and vintage stuff to discover, and, you know, uh, I love that I've got you guys there with me to um, to go through this journey. So thank you to everyone who supports me. Uh, I, I hope to see your faces in the comments, and cheers, guys, and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.